Alright. Morning, morning. It is October 24th. And we're up in Adams, stepping it out early. I'm walking out of Catherine right now. It's like 6.30. Um, today's forecasted to be a high of 41 and a low of 31 um, with a lot of rain showers. But we got a little bit of hope. Looks like the rain showers, or at least most of them, got pushed back until 2 o'clock today. And we have about 23 to 24 miles to go to hit Valley City. So um, with us getting out of camp this early, we should hopefully, I say hopefully, knock on wood, um, be able to avoid the most of it and only suffer um, the amount of suffering that we have to do, <laughs> not extra suffering. So we shall see. My hands are frozen. Um, but I wanted to get you the timestamp. Moving and grooving, baby. Moving and grooving. I believe we are going to the Clawson. The Howder Wooser Hoon and Nona Clawson. Um, I think there are some, uh, wow, blanking on the word. I can't see anything or think with that light in my I want to say Crocs, but I think it's more, um, what are those shoes called? The wooden shoes, baby. Clogs. Clogs. Crocs just was overflowing my mind so a leads are house and floss and ocean and crossing we're going to the cross and springs yeah clogs are from the netherlands and clossen is a german name you're from the netherlands no i'm not a leader house and cross and cross is a cool cool oh now i'm just making noises yeah you are all right we're going places beautiful sunrise behind us um and in front of us, the trail turns into this old chunky gravel kind of railway. Um, it kind of does a little loopage, and then it starts heading due, I want to say due north up towards Valley City. But it's about 7.40, and um, it's actually pretty pleasant out right now. Um, it hasn't been the coldest it's been in a while, so we're pushing, we're crushing McDibbling. Um, I kept my batting average up on this said railway bed which is actually quite hard to dig. Um, but I got that. I like using Magpie shovel better, but she got me a shovel too, so. Good stuff. Yeah, shovel. yeah but your shovel has more digs on it. Well, it's like an archeological uh, um, professor or archeological dig person. I don't know what you call their profession. Archeologist, I had the right word. I just used the wrong conjugation. Um, it's like them. So would you rather, like after 20 years of work, the archeological person has a um, shovel that they have worn in, they've shown a lot of love, they've done a lot of digs with it. Would you rather use that one or one fresh out of the box? Yeah, I like your shovel better. It has more memories of poop on it. A little bit of prairie sunset for ya. Sunrise, that's a sunrise, babe. Oh, sunrise. A little bit of the prairie sunrise. Just like my Scottish ancestors. Beautiful. Just like back in Scotland, uh -huh. where we hoisted pints. Why are you doing that? I don't know. The Why sun. Just the, sunrise? the sunrise inspired my Scottish jig of a heart to go a boom boom, a boom boom pow. Okay. A pow pow boom. It's doing a little Scottish jig inside of me right now. Enjoy it in silence. Okay. I'll eat her house and mountain and on. Yeah. So I think we have a found a Claus and Claus and Springs. Stop it, please. Baby, they can't give me that word Claus and not expect a Scottish it's accent. It's just Claus and. It's well, just a normal surname. German accent. That's my mom's maiden name. The Claus and? Yeah, spelled differently, but. Oh. Does now she... everyone can get into my bank. <laughs> Does she uh, do the accents when she says the Carlson? No, it's spelled different, but it's just a German name. A Swedish pancakes and a pancake syrup, yeah. Please stop it. Okay. This right here, folks, is Clausen Sprint. Ugh. Ugh, it hurt. It hurt saying that, actually. Clausen Yeah, saying it in a regular tone. That hurt my soul. But this is Clausen Springs. You walk right by it. Um, 
Don't know if you want to go no filter, no problem. It's, there. Yeah. And I don't know how they define springs in North Dakota because I haven't seen one yet. So do what you will. I wanted to point it out to y'all. There's much squawkity and much flappity flappity. There's like a purge of geese from this lake. Well, again, it's called a spring. Yeah. They're flying south for the winter. Much squawks and much flaps happened all at once. It's pointing us in the way, the direction of the Valley City. There's not much better in the morning than the morning cow. The noises it makes, the sights it provides, the ground that it shakes, the taste in the air. There's not much better than a morning cow field. We are surrounded by many cows. These are the How Now brown, brown cows. Um, we had a lot of polka dot cows yesterday, but these are the How Now brown cows. Y'all wanted some North Dakota Plains? Well, you got it. Stay on this little, it seems like grassy two track for the next three or so miles. Um, so, yeah, pretty cruisy, pretty cruisy. We don't always Mac Diddley miles, but when we do, we drink Mac Diddley. I don't know what you're talking about. The Dos Equis commercials. Oh, okay. We don't always drink beer, but when we do, we drink Dos Equis McDiddlies. Um, we are officially sub 20. And yeah, the day, it's better than predicted so far, but doesn't mean it's great. Um, it is definitely staying cold. I don't know if it's getting warmer. It doesn't feel like it. it feels like it may be in fact dropping, um, but just gonna keep crushing McDiddley and Miles. Like I said, we don't always uh, drink McDiddley Miles, but when we do, we drink Mac Mac Did Mac Dadley. Dadley. Diddley? I don't know. It's cold. What do you want from me? All right. Once more, we find ourselves in a cow field. Can I give it to the McDadley? Uh -huh. McDiddle Daddles. Hold on. Let me put my own phone away. McDiddle Daddles. Sorry about the weird angle, folks. Do I look like an oh? Do I look like an old man crossing? Yeah, I mean it's just an awkward place. My knees are broken. My knees are broken. They can walk, but barely. She looks more fluid than I do. Longer legs. Oh, rude. All right, so we have a little bit of farm stepping. Um, I think we got about two miles of this and then um, it is rest of the way to Valley City Road. So we're gonna step our way through here, maybe see a cow or two and then keep on cruising. You see the cakes that the Trail Association keeps leaving us on the trail? Huh? You see the cakes that the Trail Association keeps leaving us on trail? Oh yeah, have a bite. Trail magic. You don't want a bite? No. I haven't seen a fresh one in a while. All I see is these old ones. Oh, there's a fresh one. Yum, yum. Thank you, Trail Association. That's really nice. That's, that's awesome trail magic. Oh, uh, yeah. Nice. Beautiful routing through here, though. If this is, if this is the actual route. I think it is. If I was a trail, I would create a route through here. Um, <laughs> I haven't seen anything else in a while. I saw one post vaguely describing where to go. Oh, I see a blue blaze. That's nice, that's nice. 
I wonder why they call it Valley City. Do you think, why wouldn't they call it like mountainous town? Or just mountain town. Blue Blaze. We do get to see a cow in the field. I know y'all were worried just as much as I was. But there is, in fact, cows in fields. So we just actually met the owner of this uh, land that the trail routes you through um, for the next two miles. He uh, was out here on his ATV tooling around. And it was funny. He's like, first thing he said to us, he's like, you guys picked a cold day to hike. Not our option, man. <laughs> we gotta finish this trail. You know when North Dakotans say it's cold, it's cold. But um, he was a really nice dude. Um, we thanked him for uh, allowing the trail agency to route some off-road miles through through the land. And he's like, oh yeah, of course. He was a, he was a really nice guy. So <laughs> he also told us about his cows. He pointed down into the valley. He's like, I oh, don't worry about them. They'll just run away once you walk up to them. I'm like, thank you. I appreciate that. He also told me to try to hug one. Um, he didn't tell me that. That's just what I always want to do. All right, we walk places. All right, y'all. This is the best source I've seen on trail yet. Straight, no filter, no problem. I don't see why there would be an issue. Um, drinking this water I don't... what cows what cows do you see baby um yeah i think i've touched on this but now that we're a little farther into north dakota i'll touch on it at where we are at currently um pretty much from when you enter north dakota to valley city don't rely on natural water sources um you're gonna have to carry water for the most part from town to town um some of the campgrounds have water like um fort ransom did um, yeah cyan national grassland had it at the big campground that i showed you as well as there was a windmill we got water from but for the vast majority i would not rely on man i mean i would not rely on natural water sources um a lot of the time if it's water that's running even the river there's a lot of farm runoff um, and then even something like that if it's a creek most of the times you're gonna find that creek when you're walking through a cow field um, so again you can play uh, you can gamble that any type of dice you want to you can uh, shoot at that craps ta table if you know what I mean I like that metaphor <laughs> Every time you every time you drink uh, unfiltered water, you're rolling the dice at the craps table. Um, you're betting on you're betting it all on black. If it's really bad, you're betting it all on red. Um, oof, that, that metaphor got a little disgusting, a little too visual for y'all. Um, so, yeah, I thought I would touch on that water sources. Don't rely on natural ones. Again, it's your preference. It is also. Well, for the most part, there just aren't any. Yeah, there are like some culverts that we've passed each day, but they're very few and far between anyway. And um, you will end up, you know those cow patties I showed on film like that? That will be you. All right, that's the last thing I'm going to say about water. Don't let that be your future. This guy has some beautiful land. Um, he actually has like hills and like little ponds. Beautiful land. I bet if you got any top of lines on your property, that's a premium in North Dakota. Premium price for that land. Beautiful. Really well marked too. So sweet, sweetness. Just gotta stay on your R's and W's because there are a lot of cow trails through here. Um, but follow the markers. Alright, 
just like that, we have road for the rest of the way into Valley City. Um, anywhere from 13 to 15 miles away. Um, it's 10.15, so should be able to make it there in that two to three o'clock window, which is pretty nice. Um, so might go faster on the road, might not, we'll see. Um, looks like the rain pushed up. Should have a little bubble hitting us at 11, but um, so far so good. Road time, I gotta get a pointy thing out of my sock. All right, let's do it. All right, so the trail drops you down into this little valley along the river, and um, you end up just following these topo lines all the way into town. This road, I think, is 45th Street. Connects us into a road up there, and that road should just be the straight shot into town. Really beautiful. Yeah, it's yeah. really nice. Yeah. And Magpie did say when we popped out on the road, we had 13 and a half miles left. So um, yeah, we should be getting into town at a good time. Now we should have like 12, somewhere in there. So yeah, less, than less than 12 and it's 10.30. Oh, 10.50, nice. Maybe not though. All right, the road is called County Road 21. And that's where we just do a straight Shot for the next 12 miles. Like I said, underneath 12, but right in there. Yeah. Just a whoop, wrong zoom. Just a straight shot. Don't stop. Get it. Get it. All right. So it's noon, right on the dot, and we have about seven more to go somewhere in there so um yeah a little a little above two hours of hiking maybe two hours if we can hold a three and a half mile per hour pace which it's road we should be able to do um somewhere in there but i think it's also a little above seven miles like maybe seven and a half or something so yeah it's just now starting to rain a little bit just some showers but um yeah nothing near as bad as that first day in north dakota Ooh. Um, so, knowing that we got a nice warm spot ahead of us is really motivating to push these miles out. Um, even if we get rained on, we know we'll be able to dry out and actually be warm. So, we're pushing. We are pushing. Beautiful though. I can't say enough about North Dakota. I am a giant fan. Even if I have to suffer some cold through here, um, it's just really beautiful. All right. Little schoolhouse you walk by. There's a plaque there. Um, I guess it's an old, yeah, schoolhouse. It's called King's School. But I'm sorry, y'all. I got town and I got food and I got warmth. Got a lot of stuff on my mind. We're pushing, we're pushing. Crush McDiddlian. Who are the Crush McDiddles? Where are the Crush McDiddles? Sweetness. All right, that's really awesome. Right around four miles, I think a little bit less from Valley City is a privy. So if you don't want to become a cornfield pooper or the side of a road pooper, I'd recommend trying to get it out now because um, North Dakota, there's not a lot around, but once you get to these population hubs usually um like anywhere the houses become more condensed so i would highly recommend trying to get it out um before you hike the last four miles in a valley city there's also really cool there's also a nice gazebo that you could take a break under um really awesome that they have this here so thank you nct I don't know if y'all built it or what, but really beautiful area. Thank you. I got to use that privy right after the baby. Isn't that nice they have that here? What? Isn't that like nice they have this here? Yes. Oh, nice. All right, about a mile before town on 116th Ave. It looks like we got some uh, actually sidewalk slash bike path, which is nice. Um, yeah, about a mile before town. It's 150. 
So, um, our, our privy break took up some time, but that's okay. Um, just been pushing, just been pushing y'all. Um, trying to avoid the cold and the rain, which I don't know if it's possible anymore, but oh well, I ramble. Um, about a mile before town. Let's get it. All right, so where the hotels are in town, um, they're actually not really near a corner store. If you stay at the Super 8, it is. But if you don't, it's not. Oh, look at that. Bismarck. That's our, that's pretty much our end point, but more than 133. It's like 300 miles. Um, but on your way into town, you pass by a Love's and a McDonald's if you instantly need food. If not, if you look over Magpie's left shoulder, you see the marathon sign that's the one right next to the super eight um so depending on where you want to stop you can go into either one um where we're staying it's like 0.2.3 .2 and we're trying to avoid more walking so we're going to figure out which one we're going to pop in for town snacks and then keep on cruising that's really nice that they don't make you leapfrog over the interstate you gotta go under it um we made a judgment call loves was too far for us we're too lazy to walk uh whatever, however far it was off trail, maybe 50 feet. Um, instead, we're going to the marathon that may, might be like 20 feet off trail. So we made a judgment call, 30 feet extra was too much for us. Um, feeling all types of lazy, um, rainy in a town day. So gonna maybe grab something at this marathon. All right, it's 2.30, there she blows. This might be our last town stop, folks. Barring any acts of God, um, again, knock on wood, this should be, in theory, our last town stop, so. One second. Um, in theory, should be the last one. Um, this little road is kind of where all the hotels are. Um, you got the Merit Inn, you got the Econo, actually, which looks okay. And then you got the Super 8 by the gas station which that gas station was nuts there's they had everything pizza on the ground yeah magpie dropped and it initially landed with the box still closed and then i went to pick it up and two of them flopped over onto the ground yep magpie has gas and station i'm really upset about that yep magpie has gas station pizza but that's okay I no we're in town um and it's actually starting to rain pretty it's heavy like right now really cold. which is pretty awesome so we timed it couldn't have been more perfect it's gonna be like 2.40 by the time we reach the front desk. Um, yeah, great stuff. I'll tell you more about the gas station once we check in. I know you guys wanna hear about that. I know you did, baby. Oh, I dropped the pizza. It's okay. I might. Getting <laughs> the floor pizza. All right, folks, we have made it. Um, this is the full spread of what we got going on at the gas station. Got some monster cookies, um, some green tea from down in the lobby, some burgers. Magpie ate the floor pizza. I ate the floor pizza. You looked hungry. Some jalapeno things, but Magpie got brownies as well as carrot cake. Red velvet cake and chocolate cake. Um, got, oh, okay, there you go. Got me a soda, Magpie got her bubblies. I got myself a Gatorade, some Pringles, and then some ex extra chips just to munch on. Oh, and three donuts. I don't like donuts. I don't know why people keep giving me donuts. I never get donuts. Yeah. So, um. And he got himself this. Very oh, yeah. Day. Yeah, look at it. Isn't that awesome? To replace his lost Pheasant hat. Pheasant Country, North Dakota. So, to replace my lost hat, I have a North Dakota beanie now, or toque. I thought it said Pheasant County, and I was like, that makes sense. I thought it said County, just too. Pheasant Country. Your face is probably just as burnt as mine. Yours is more windburnt than mine, but I'm pretty oh. windburnt. So, in theory, this should be our last town stay. I'm going to give Magpie the camera because I wanted to show how many layers been wearing through the road walks and through North Dakota in general. So, first things first. I got pockets everywhere. First things first, have the rain jacket. Take that off. Second, have the wind jacket, take that off. Third, have the puffy jacket, take that off. And then I have a thermal on top and a thermal on bottom. So take one ball kava off, 
You already took your other oh, boat. Two balaclavas. Two balaclavas. Um, take off one thermal. It's going to be tough to do that without taking off your other one. There you go. And then for for the OnlyFans. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Um, so that's how much layers I've been wearing every day and it's still cold. And on the bottom, he's wearing pants, then thermal leggings, and then boxers. Yeah. Yeah. No drawers. Actually, just thermal leggings and pants. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. I like to go drawerless. Well, there we go. Yeah. A little behind the scenes sneak peek. Whew. All right. So that's it. Um, good stuff there. Again, it's not terribly far to get to the corner store, but we didn't really want to go anywhere. It's really cold outside. Yeah. Also. It's cold. It's three o'clock um, that we're in inside the room. And thankfully, you can see how wet it is outside. This should be, in theory, our last town stop. In theory, this should be our last town stop. So. Said that like eight Whew, times. I know it's, it's it's exciting. It is. I'm just tired. All right. I want to eat. I want to rest. Bye bye. Okay. Now I now I film Magpie doing the rest. No. Oh, really? but I I did the show. Yeah, I took. I'm no. <laughs> All right. Bye bye. Whoops. Sorry. Forgot to stop the tracker. Um, the hotel is only like point two off trail, so um, I think from Magpie's math. We have done, I think, right around 24 today. So, as always, the exact mileage will be in the YouTube video um, in the description. Cool, cool. Good Nero day.